Today we're going to be doing some planes. So currently all I'm doing is really testing the technology. The thing is, um, there are trees on the runway, right? So I need to somehow take off before hitting those trees. I might be able to actually dodge them a little bit, you know. It's risky and I'm probably going to smack the nukes off the ground because my wheels are too far back, but we'll try it. Well, oh, 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 yeah, they blew up. <laughs> now, the issue I have is that these Panther engines are not very good at high atmosphere. Oh, for oh no, 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 uh, We managed to lose more engines, and my fuselage is on the ground, which means I'm probably going to explode in a minute. Now, I should be able to take off at roughly this speed, the problem being that the nuclear engines are still going to smack into the ground, which is why I'm using this. Ah, oh, that cactus is a bit in the way. Oh, I lost one nuke. Oh, that is awful. Oh, that is horrendous. Now, it appears that single-stage aircraft aren't really working out for me. However, I might be able to just line it up between those two trees, but there's a cactus in the way as well. Ah, damn it. We're gonna have to thread the needle here, boys. Okay, we're gonna miss the tree. Yes. Now we just need to make sure we can take off. Yes, there we go. Both nuclear engines are intact and we are headed for Lua. I do not plan to get to Lua, but we'll give it a go anyway. Ah, uh, leaving the space center and all its new trees behind. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Got some pretty banging screenshots here though. Now the issue is, these Panther engines aren't brilliant. They're not very good at high altitude flight, although they are better than some of the others, but they're, they're just not good at high altitude flight. So that's going to be something that's bringing us down. Now another problem is uh, they all cut out at a certain speed, and the speeds that we need to go at are way too high, past the Panther's operating speeds. Now currently the thrust is still going up, which gives us a thrust to weight ratio of 1.1. Oh, we're going through the clouds now. It's been a while since I've done an SSTO. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a functioning SSTO, though. Now I need to do my speed run very early, because the Panthers are going to really struggle if I get any higher than this. But we're reaching pretty good speeds. We're going down again, though. Well, that's not good. But that is a good shot. Quite good screenshots from this test flight. Converting some of that momentum into vertical velocity. Now, the, the engines are going to be falling off very heavily now which is a massive shame. I'm going to use the Reliant engine now to drain my oxidizer, which I have quite a lot of, so we should be able to get a fairly good aquapsis. Again, some pretty good shots. Oh, look at that. And the Panther engines have run out. Nuclear engine time with 4,600 meters per second. Look at that, we're getting an orbit. 3,100 left. The Delta V readout's going a little bit wonk. Look at that. Road is looking sweet in this new update. And we have an orbit around road. 2,600 meters per second remaining. Shall we go to Lua? And now we have begun the burn that will take us from road to Lua. And I think if we land at Lua's space center, we can actually refuel. In this recent update, I added a, a refueling station to Lua's surface, which will let you refuel, provided that you are in range. So uh, we might be able to get the fuel back and go on to other places. Although I didn't actually bring any science experiments with me, we'll still be able to do some surface samples. As usual, a perfect looking <laughs> encounter. Right, and now we are using the air to slow down. It's working quite well, actually. Just missing those mountains there. And there's a terraformer, one of the new looking terraformers as well. That's pretty cool. I could actually land on that and sample it if I wanted to, but I'm going a bit too fast for my nuclear engines to be able to slow me down enough. Some really good looking shots in this episode. I wasn't expecting to create a functioning SSTO. I'm very surprised that that works. It definitely won't work on Kerbin though. And we've escaped the atmosphere again. Now then, I need to plot a course for the lower base runway. I don't know how fast Lua rotates, so I think that might actually be at periapsis. Yes, this is like perfectly timed. The Lua runway is going to be at our periapsis. <laughs> and there's Lua's base. I, don't know, I might angle myself a little bit just to get me over there. But that's where I'm landing. There's the Lua base. I don't think I've been here before in a Beyond Home episode. I could be wrong, but I'm going to switch from using maneuver to manual. And we're going to try and land on that runway, my dudes. There we are. Slowed ourselves down. And over we go. Ooh, this is going to be close. This is going to be really close. Do not hit the surface. Oh, I didn't want to use the jets, though. I'm not very good at piloting with jets. Here it is. Eight, seven, six, five. Now, the problem is uh, they're jet engines, so their thrust is not instant. But uh, I think this is kind of working. Just have to be very, very careful and land on the wheels and not the nukes. 
There we are. Yes, I've never actually used this before. Can I just buy? Oh, yes, it's working. Fantastic. I'm not sure how much money that cost, but uh, I have my fuel back. Crew report from the runway. There we go. We can still do some experiments. So with the science gained from the Lua base, we might actually be able to unlock proper SSTO engines. And that's one of the things I was really excited for when coming up with uh, this series. Big SSTOs, big ships, lots of big like motherships that are gonna take me everywhere it's gonna be great right let's go i'm gonna fire up these jet engines to their full thrust which is uh a whole 12 kilonewtons this is not working very well is it let's activate the nukes and goodbye lua base another screenshot some fantastic wallpapers and screenshots in this episode the amount of particles that those engines are creating is not giving my pc a good time it's time to leave for road and we're getting very close to the edge oh there we go, there we go, there we go. Whew. We have left Lua. Goodbye, Lua base. <laughs> now I need to somehow survive re-entry. <laughs> I've got parachutes to do that, but um, yeah, it's a plane. There's not really much in terms of uh, saving me from the heat. Now I didn't really need to actually get the fuel from Lua's surface, to be honest. I could have easily done it absolutely fine without but you know I, I like landing in the day side and I just wanted the security look at that there's road some really good cinematic shots in this wow <laughs> except now my plane's in it but you know after effects content aware fill can get rid of that just fine at least I hope so <laughs> right let's get ready for re-entry this is not called ready for re-entry And here we are. I should have the most fuel in that because the flow priority, which means the center of mass is closest to the front. So if you set your flow priority to minus 11, as your fuel goes down, this one will stay full, which means the center of mass will slowly drift uh, further and further front. So uh, your re-entry will be much better and you won't flip around so much. Now we just need to see if I can successfully re-enter this ship. I'm falling at a speed of 100 meters per second, but it's slowly, uh, I'm gonna be going up again. <laughs> I'm gonna bounce off the atmosphere if I do this. Look at that, and I'm going up again. <laughs> That's really cool. Right, I'm just gonna nosedive. Probably not the best way you want to be re-entering, but whatever works. This plane is really stable. I wasn't expecting this to perform this well, I'll be, I'll be honest. It's only just having stability problems because I just manually flipped it over. And we still have an orbit. I guess we'll be doing a second pass then. Oh, that looks good as well. I don't know which one of these shots to select for the thumbnail. And in full Elite Dangerous style, the sunrise on road. It's just beautiful. I'm sure this is a fairly fine angle of attack. <laughs> Although overheating is also a thing that I want to avoid, so uh, let's not. <laughs> there it is, there's the KSC. You know what, I'm making a direct line for the KSC. Yeah, the plane's way too light, it's very responsive now. Nah, the runway's not happening. Go way too quick for it. But my engines are back up. Although the runway could happen. If I deploy the chutes, then yeah, sure. Yeah, this this is a pretty good way to land on the runway. I made the good idea of putting the chutes on the center of mass. So I should be able to face. Maybe not quite completely retrograde. Oh, please work. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Oh, I lost a wing. Oh, that was, a, that was a bad landing, but we landed back on the runway, <laughs> and all I lost was one wing. So there we go, let's see how much science we got from that. From just surface samples and EVA reports around the Kerbal Space Center, 189.8 science. Incredible. And I think I'm going to go for hypersonic flight. It's very tempting but I'm not sure, so let me know in the comments, um, because obviously I'll spend it on whatever you guys want to see, whether you want to see more space planes or anything like that. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you enjoyed that, please leave a like and subscribe. These episodes take a lot of effort to make, and I'll see you all in the next episode.